G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so it's Sunday morning here in Australia uh, and the markets are moving up, which is good. We're finally back over that billion dollar mark. So it all happens very quickly here in uh, the crypto space. But there is something that we need to keep uh, an eye on and this uh, has uh, a, a bit of significance in the crypto market. So I will come back to this, but where is it? Here we go. Analysts say Bitcoin price uh, sell-off may occur as Chinese New Year approaches. Uh, and, and this does happen. The New Year comes around, uh, China and you know parts of Asia are quite big in, on cryptocurrencies. And they do like to take a profit around about this time of the year uh, and go and celebrate and all the rest of it. So the Chinese New Year is on the 12th of February. So we're still about sort of, you know, a fort, just under a fortnight away. So it'll be very interesting to see, uh, you know, how much of a significance this will play, if any at all. Look, normally it does play a little bit of a difference. There is a bit of a price drop around about this time. But whether it's going to be a really significant uh, price drop or not, uh, I'm not sure. And look, in, in all fairness, I don't think there will be. But it wouldn't surprise me if we see a little bit of downwards action, you know, closer to the date. Could see it, you know, starting, you know, tomorrow, who knows. But just something we need to keep an eye out. So this is something that's coming up. Uh, and keep the 12th of February uh, in mind. Again, the sell-off will likely happen before it. But after the new year, and that's the Chinese New Year, probably, uh, again, not financial advice. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, but it might be somewhat bullish after that. People will start to reinvest, uh, you know, the new year and all the rest of it for them. So something we should keep an eye out for, 12th of February. All right, back to the market. So again, we're over that billion dollar mark, uh, sorry, trillion dollar mark, which is really good. And that's where we want to be. Look, BTC dominance continues to drop and ETH uh, dominance uh, slash altcoin dominance continues to rise. Although, although look, it, really the ETH dominance is, isn't all of the altcoin dominance, but that is generally what you can kind of look at because there's BTH, ETC, uh, and then all the rest, which is, you know, the altcoins. But really, I'll just go off the ETH dominance. If that's rising, it means altcoins are rising. Now, gas price is 100. This is way too high. Ethereum is just... Yeah, useless to the average uh, trader at the moment with those kind of prices. And, you know, I say this all the time and I hate to harp on, but, you know, layer two solutions just can't come quick enough. It really is what's going to stop Ethereum, you know, being the dominant force in the altcoin space. Uh, and, you know, again, they don't want to, you know, jump too fast into layer two solutions without the security there. So I understand it's uh, going to be a bit of a slow process. But at the moment, things like Polkadot and Cardano will just continue to rise against Ethereum. Uh, and they really, again, they need to have that fixed sooner rather than later, but not at the cost of the security of the network. So it is a slow process, although there is talks that, you know, maybe by the end of this year, not ETH 2.0 full rollout, but we'll have some of the sharding and all the rest of it sort of going. So uh, that will be uh, extremely good news for Ethereum. And again, I'm still super bullish on Ethereum. I think it is the future. I think it's going to be the biggest one. I think there's a place for Polkadot and Cardano, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right. Uh, market overall looks pretty green here, really. Not too bad, which is good. So again, the top 100 is really what I focus on. I don't invest too much outside of the top 100, and I don't invest too much outside of the top 50, in all fairness. It's not that I don't invest in them at all. I, I do. I've got a small percentage of my coins, uh, sorry, a small percentage of my portfolio outside of the top 100. 100 not too many though pretty much everything really is in the top 100 except for a few bits and pieces here and there but again mostly uh within the top 50 really uh and look the things i've invested in there are quite quickly moving into uh the top sort of 20 and things like that so again i'm, I'm massive on DeFi. i think nft uh, NFTs and gaming is going to be big. I think they're going to be more in the next bull run. But look, nothing wrong with getting a position in them now because they're still going to pump this time. But I really think uh, gaming 
uh, and NFTs and that will be in the next bull run. Uh, I think that's where they'll really see their big kind of moves. I think this one will be all be will all be about DeFi pretty much. Find some good DeFi pro projects uh, and just hold you know hold on to them uh, until again you think when the top is not financial advice. Uh, and then, you know, again, my plan is I'm going to sell half of all my altcoins. I don't care what they are. Uh, and again, it might be even more than half. We'll have to wait and see. As for Bitcoin, uh, I, I'm, I might uh, sell sort of 20, 30%. And then again, it's might. It just really depends. You know, things change from a day to day basis. But that is my sort of plan at the moment. Uh, whether that plays out exactly like that, we'll have to wait and see. But all right, let's have a look. What has really moved in the last 24 hours? Well, I can tell you XRP was one of them. And there we can go up 38%. There is a telegram, telegram group that are pumping XRP at the moment. So just be careful. Uh, I think with all the SEC news and all the rest of it, uh, XRP is going to have a hard time really pumping. Uh, so this uh, is probably going to be a pump and dump. But again, no guarantees, and that's not XRP slash Ripple pumping and dumping it. That's some other people. But look, Voyager Token are uh, doing really, really well. So congratulations to them and anyone that's involved. Uh, One Inch uh, has made some really good moves. Uh, a DEX that uh, a lot of people are bullish on. So congratulations. Curve Uniswap is really on a tear. Uh, I am kicking myself that I sold my uh, Uniswap tokens, but look, it wasn't performing that well at the time and I did sell it for a profit, so I didn't lose any money. So what can you do? The graph, I am super bullish on the graph long term. I don't know how well it's going to do this uh, kind of cycle, but long term, I think data is going to be massive. So I've got uh, some of the graph, I've got some Filecoin, and again, they're more long term plays, like really long term, you know, 5, 10, uh, 20 year kind of plays. But, you know, again, that's just me and my personal opinion. You've got to do your own research. But I am glad that they are doing well because uh, I was not in profit for a while with those. Sushi just continues to grow all the time. And, you know, now that it's teamed up with Yearn Finance and that, uh, yeah, very, very interesting project. And I do think uh, it's going to take up some ground on Uniswap, but I don't think it'll overtake Uniswap. I think Uniswap's got too much of a uh, first player advantage. Uh, and look, Double digit gains, I mean, again, Voyager taken 80%. That is absolutely skyrocketing and 176% in seven days. Um, yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's hard to say whether I would take profits on that. Look, if it's gone up four, five hundred percent in a few days, I'm definitely taking some profits. You know, a hundred percent. I mean, that's nearly two hundred percent. So yeah, I probably would consider taking some profits on that. Uh, with you know whether you cash out or not, I guess it believes it's sorry. It's about whether you really believe in Voyager token. If you do, uh, and again, you think we're still very in this early in the cycle, then you know let it ride. Uh, but you know. Again, for me, around about that kind of 300%, I would consider taking some profits unless you fundamentally believe in the project. And again, you think we're very early uh, in this uh, kind of bull run. Again, it's still January. If it plays out how it has on previous cycles, we're not going to top out until December this year. So it means there's a lot more upside. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't guarantee that this token pumps for that whole time and I'm not throwing any shade on Voyager token at all I like what they're doing I'm just saying you know when things have big pumps like this uh, and even one inch you know what I mean sometimes it might be a consideration to take just some profit you don't have to take it all or even get your money back uh, but maybe just take some of it and you know invest it in other things or wait for a pullback to buy back in again that's more for traders uh, but even investors can do the same but once you take some of the profit Again, just work out a good strategy for what you're going to do. But we can see this is some really good gains, you know, for some of these. They're all double digits. And I mean, you know, it goes down to here. Oh, there you go. Even uh, my deck, something that probably just uh, M decks are just pushed in uh, double digit gains. And again, everything is very, very green here. It's green over the seven day. It's green over the 25 hour, 24 hour. Sorry, and it's green over the hour. So uh, going quite nicely. But what about losers? Have there been too many losers in the top 100s? Well, let's have a look and find out. Yes, of course there has. So Doge, uh, of course it was going to pull back. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see whether the pullback continues. Uh, but in saying that, 
I don't think Doge is done just yet. I'm not putting any money into it at the moment, but I do expect Doge to just continue to pump throughout this bull run. But it'll be up and down, up and down, up and down. This was an almighty pump, you know, 240%. I think it was, uh, it did something crazy like, you know, 800% or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, even Vergecoin was the same. It had a really good pump. And so anything that has big, massive pumps, at some stage, it is definitely going to have a pullback. And same with Engine Coin. It went up well over 100 sort of percent. Uh, so, of course, it was going to pull back. It doesn't mean it's the end of the project and it's going to die or anything like that. This is just the natural part of the cycles. And look, these kind of pullbacks aren't too bad. There's only really the top, you know, four that are in double digits. Everything else is just single digit. I mean, Decred, 21% for the week. That's, you know, nothing to kind of cry about. And a 4% pullback, fair enough. But then there are some projects like Engine that have really, you know, taken a bit of a hit. But again, they had such a big pump. It doesn't mean the world is coming to an end. It doesn't mean you have to sell your stocks and get out of it. It just means it's having a healthy correction. That's all part of the sort of, you know, market cycles. And again, for me, I've said this a number of times. I think we're still early. I think, you know, sometime between sort of, August to December this year is going to be the cycle peak. Exactly where it is, I don't know. Could push out even further into kind of February next year. So February 22. But look, I don't know. I can't give you an exact date. Uh, and anyone that says they know exactly when it's going to happen uh, is, you know, they're, they're giving you an opinion. That's what it is. It's not a fact. No one knows exactly when the peak's coming and no one knows exactly what the, you know, the price highs are going to be of entities, any of these coins. It is all just a guess. Uh, and, and I don't mind, you know, people having a guess because that's what I'm always doing. But, you know, just be aware of anyone that says, yes, on this date it's going to happen. Uh, and, you know, this is going to be the exact price. They, they can take guesses. But, uh, and again, you know, just be mindful. That's all it is. It's an educated guess. Uh, and, I'm, or, and I'm completely okay with educated guesses because uh, that's all I'm doing is giving you my educated guess. But really, price predictions, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I, I have, you know, rough sort of variants. I think Bitcoin's going to go to at least $100,000 uh, in this cycle. But what its maximum height could be, uh, I don't know. And is there a possibility that Bitcoin doesn't make 100000 yeah, look, absolutely. I, I think there is a possibility it doesn't make 100000 I just think it's very low. And in my personal opinion, I think it goes to at least 100000 But just that's my personal opinion, nothing else. All right, let's move on. Let's have a look at the charts. So I did decide to move these lines. So I did have this line a little bit like this. And I just thought, well, if I'm going to encapsulate sort of, you know, this candle uh, wick, then I should be trying to encapsulate all the candle wicks. Now, not this one. I'm just going to simply encapsulate these first few. So I bring it down to here and where it gets those candle wicks. And then I'm just going to leave that there. And it just so happens to line up with that wick, that wick, and that wick. Now, this was an outlier. So this obviously wicked up really high. This was the Elon tweet uh, did that. Uh, but look, it is still on a bit of an upward upward upward. God, I can't even say upward trajectory. Projector, God, my English is awful. Anyone would think it's not my first language. But I am waiting to see if it's going to hit this uh, line of resistance and then start to roll over again. As we spoke about before, the Chinese New Year coming up February uh, 12th. Uh, so maybe this sort of just keep continues on that downward path. So this isn't completely invalid at the moment. It is in, you know, it is invalid in this part, but this could then roll over and come back down and touch air. So I'm just going to leave this here until we break this pattern and, you know, February 12th comes around and we sort of see what happens. But I am still bullish on Bitcoin in the long term. I think this is just a correction that was uh, overdue and we'll have to wait and see what happens from here. All right. So, yeah, we looked at that. Sorry, here, Grayscale. So, they have uh, resumed their private placement for the Ethereum Trust. So, this is uh, bullish news for Ethereum. Now, it is a private placement, though. So, a uh, Grayscale, you know, your average day kind of investor, they don't invest in Grayscale. This is just institutions that get in there. Or, you know, people who have, I think it's a minimum $50,000 you have to uh, have to invest in things like that. But, look... Super good news for Ethereum. There are a lot of people who are extremely bullish about Ethereum. I'm one of them. 
Uh, again, I don't know exactly what the price is going to go to, but I would think a minimum of 5,000 uh, would be my guess. Uh, 10,000 wouldn't surprise me. And there, you know, Ivan uh, and BitBoy, you know, they've said it could go, you know, 20, even 50,000. And again, that wouldn't surprise me either. I think that's, you know, a fairly bullish uh, kind of target, and I'm not sure it'll do it. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me if it did. Crypto does some unbelievable things, and, you know, when you make estimations, you're going to be right on some of them. That's just the way it is. You're going to be completely wrong on others. And some will just completely outdo what anyone ever thought they would. So whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or some other random altcoin that people you know, are talking about, there are definitely going to be things out there that are just going to absolutely blow people's minds and they will have never saw it coming. But, you know, Grayscale, so their Ethereum trust, it is the second biggest one. In saying that, their Bitcoin uh, trust... That takes up 80%, 87% of their total uh, sort of volume. So most of the money is going into Bitcoin, but then we have uh, a reasonable amount going into Ethereum, and then they've got other trusts as well, and they're bringing out new trusts. Now, this is concerning. India tried to do this a while ago. So India proposes cryptocurrency ban. They tried to ban it a while ago, and the Supreme Court there overthrew it. Now, <sighs> Where was the part I was looking for? So here, the Indian government is considering a plan to ban all private currencies, as well as a plan to introduce a central bank digital uh, currency. Now, again, they tried to do this a while ago and the Supreme Court came in and, excuse me, and said, no, uh, you know, a lot of people, and especially in poorer countries, they've invested in things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP and all the rest of it, because it's probably the best chance they have of being, you know, of trying to get uh, themselves out of the, you know, being poor. Uh, and so banning cryptocurrencies, I think that would really affect, uh, you know, a lot of the poorer uh, demographic. Yeah, the poorer demographic, the, the, the not so wealthy, you know, the wealthy, they don't need cryptocurrencies. Will they invest in cryptocurrencies? Sure they will, but they don't need it. Whereas, you know, the uh, lower socioeconomical demographic, they need things like this. This is their chance to try and pull themselves out. And not every you know person who doesn't have money is going to get involved in this and be able to do it, but there will be enough. And by banning cryptocurrencies, you're just keeping the poor poor. And that's this whole CBD thing. You know, it's the old finance trying to hold on to the you know the vice-like grip that they have on the financial system because they don't want things to change. They need the poor to be poor and the rich to stay rich. Uh, so I really hope this doesn't get up, although it does say down here, they said, you know, there will be certain uh, exceptions. And so people are holding out hope that that means, you know, there will be some cryptocurrencies that they will allow uh, investing in, you know, maybe Bitcoin and Ethereum or something like that. And they won't just simply ban them all and force all their population into CBDCs, which is just fiat. Nothing changes. It's just a digital version of it. So I really hope this doesn't get up. I hope the Supreme Court again says no. You know, things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, other coins like that, you know, they're legit and they have a place. It would be really disappointing uh, if India were to ban this, particularly as they have uh, quite a large portion of their population that are impoverished. Uh, and this, you know, cryptocurrencies is a way out for some of them. Now, again, not all of them will take advantage of it. There'll be plenty that just don't believe in it, and that's fine. But for some of them who do believe in it, and, you know, and it's an if, although it's, a, you know, I would say in my personal opinion, chances are high, but again, never financial advice. If they invest in things like Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum and some other cryptocurrencies, uh, and they do do well, like I suspect they will do well, you know, it could really change the life uh, for, you know, some of their population. Whereas CBDCs aren't going to change uh, the lives for any of their population. Uh, they won't go up in value. They will just stay the same. They're always going to be worth whatever they're worth. But inflation and all the rest of it will eat away at that. All right, last but not least, BlockFi. So I use BlockFi. I've been using them for a while. There's a link down below. Uh, the sign-up process is a bit uh, tedious. But look, other than that, I love BlockFi. Uh, they are now uh, filing for a Bitcoin trust. So they're going to go up the likes of um, Grayscale and things like that. It'll be interesting to see how it works with BlockFi, though. Are they only going to uh, have their uh, Bitcoin trust um 
for institutional uh, type adoption or is the trust going to allow people, you know, in smaller, you know, less financial uh, demographics, I don't know, poorer basically, there's no other way to say it, or is it going to allow, you know, everyday investors and poorer people <laughs> basically to get in and, you know, like, it doesn't mean you have to be poor to get in. So I just want to be careful when I'm saying that. But basically, you know, like institutions, you know, they're not poor. Institutions are simply not poor. Anything other than, you know, those institutional investors would be considered poor to them. But it doesn't mean you're poor if you have less money than someone else. It's all a relative kind of uh, sort of thing. But yeah, it'll be interesting. Again, I love BlockFi. Uh, I have uh, some of my crypto with BlockFi earning interest. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. But again, that's just my personal opinion. There'll be links down below in the descriptions of all the apps that I use. So for my Australian viewers, uh, I use uh, CoinSpot. Uh, great uh, regulated, you know, in my opinion, trustworthy exchange that you can use. You know, some of the fees are a little bit sort of exy, but uh, in Australia, there's nothing you can do. There's also Binance down there. I use Binance, so you can use my link and look, you'll get a, uh, a bonus for joining and I'll get a little bit of a bonus. But if you don't want to use my link, that's fine. Uh, I still recommend BlockFi. So use my link, don't use my link. I don't really care. Uh, I would like it if you did. But if you don't want to and you just want to check out BlockFi all by yourself, go ahead. Like I said, the uh, sign-up process can be a little bit tedious and can take a while. Uh, I tried to sign up. I think three times uh, and the first two times I just gave up it was all too much and too hard the third time uh, I was finally successful uh, but look in saying that maybe it's a little bit easier now I did sign up a while ago you know it's almost a year ago if not more so hopefully it's uh, more simple great way uh, to earn interest on some of your things like Litecoin Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, and you know you can use uh, you can earn interest in those cryptocurrencies or USDC or Paxos Gold or, you know, however you want to do it again. But look, big news that Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, Fi, BlockFi are bringing out their own Bitcoin trust. Uh, very interesting times ahead. All right, that's it. Again, it's Sunday here in Australia, so there's not a whole lot of news that comes out over the weekend. We're really waiting to see what happens with the market come Monday. You know, are we going to push, you know, is this now, uh, you know, turning more bullish? Again, according to Bitcoin, things are looking somewhat more bullish, but we really need to break out of this before that is confirmed. We could simply come up, bounce off this uh, and start to make our way down further. And again, the Chinese New Year coming up, that is completely possible as well. All right, hit that like button down below, click the subscribe button, click the bell, or bell icon so you get updates when I bring out uh, new content, which is daily. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train. Things are looking pretty good at the moment. And I'll see you next time.